now my daddy's gone to glory. I work real hard, I drank corn liquor. That's the truth. <laughs> yes, you have read the title of this video correctly. First things first, I want to welcome you to my channel. For those that have seen my videos before, you know who I am. I'm Kel Carter, otherwise known as a mad military historian. But today's video is going to be a very special video. Now, normally my videos focus on individual black units in World War II and kind of giving a breakdown of their history, what they went through, any trials and tribulations and the like like that. But when I first started this channel, one of the things I wanted to do was to look at depictions of black soldiers in popular culture and break down, well, one, break down the context of the movie or the TV show see what they got right, see what they got wrong, but more importantly, see, explain how it connects to black military history as a whole, and even how it connects to black history on the, on the grander scale. So, what better way to start this sub-series than looking at what I would consider arguably one of the best Black World War II movies out there. And that movie is a soldier story. Now, for those of y'all who have not seen a soldier story, you may or may not have heard it referenced in other media. But one of the one of the earliest media I can think of off the top of my head is in Martin. Now, I don't know if y'all seen the, the episode where Martin goes to court and he says, "The day of the Geechee is over." <laughs> that actually refers back to this movie. The day of the Geechee is gone, boy. So. Mm -hmm. To get started or to explain, well, why do I consider this one of the best Black World War II movies out there? Well, the reason, to keep it short and to the point, the reason why I consider it one of the best Black World War II movies out there is because unlike most Black World War II movies, which kind of focus more so on the action and less on the racism or less on the training, this movie is kind of the exact opposite. Now, is it a completely accurate movie? No. Is it... Is it military focus where they're like literally doing everything right? No, but at the same time, it's one of the few movies that actually takes a pretty decent dive into the subject matter that I just at the aforementioned subject matter. So, before I get started, I want to get some a few things out of the way first. For those of y'all who are used to seeing my unit videos, this video may be a little bit longer than that. So, if you don't wish to see a long video, I apologize. I'll try to do the best I can to keep it within time. But for those of y'all who actually enjoy hearing my voice, which, to be honest, is kind of surprising, but if y'all enjoy hearing my voice and actually listen to me talk, then congratulations. I'm going to have a little bit longer video. Now, the last thing I'm going to touch on before I get started with the actual content of the video is because of how much stuff is in a soldier's story, I may have to do three videos on this subject matter. Now, the way I have it planned up, planned out is that the video, today's video, the first video, will focus primarily on the historical context that led to the movie, as well as understanding the historical context of the setting that the movie takes place in, and the most important thing to lay down, the theme of the movie, and kind of delving into the theme of the movie. The second, the second video will focus primarily on the characters that are in the movie, the major characters, and then tying them back to the theme that I'm going to mention today, and... The third and final video will be primarily general trivia, historical trivia that I noticed in the film that you may or may not have noticed, but like I'm, I'm going to try to point it out and explain again his, his historical context. So again, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So if you have never seen a soldier story, first things first, I would advise turning this video off and actually watching it. But for those who just need a refresher course to kind of remember what the movie was about, the movie follows a black JAG officer named Captain Davenport as he journeys to the south, well specifically a southern military base, to investigate the murder of a black sergeant named Master Sergeant Vernon Waters. Now, initially people speculate that either the Klan has, has killed the sergeant or that the local white population has killed him or even a white officer has killed him. But the as Captain Davenport, he does an investigation, he starts looking into the people who were around the sergeant and trying to figure out how the sergeant was as a person when he was alive, as well as other things, he begins to delve deeper into a story 
that is a little bit more complex than he initially thought. And it ultimately results in an ending that some people say they they may have seen coming from a mile away and others have not. But like I said, if you haven't seen a movie, please take the time to watch the movie because it is a pretty good movie and it's very interesting. So to get to the historical content that led to the creation of a soldier story, there's two parts of it. There is the broad sense in terms of black movies and black media during the, during the time frame and there is the black military history aspect of it. So from the black media aspect of it, a soldier story came from, originally came from a, from a play. But when you look at the time frame of the 1980s, the 1980s saw a shift in well, black oriented media in comparison to the 1970s. Now in the 1970s, most black media or most popular black media at the time focus primarily on what we would consider like black reality. Like they either fell in the category of black exploitation movies, such as one of my favorites, The Mac, where it focused on the less than glamorous side of people, of black folks trying to survive and combat racism, albeit in a not so noble manner. But then you also had reality movies such as like Good Times, and also another favorite of mine, Claudine, where you look at the average black person who is trying to make ends meet and survive and put food on the table for their families. Now, in the 1980s, this begins to change. And why does this change in the 1980s? Well, in the 1980s, we begin to see the, the boom of the black middle class. And with the boom of the black middle class, black-oriented media begins to shift it's narrative from focusing on like in essence black reality based media to more so black aspirational media so media goes from move from tv shows like good times and sanford and son to tv shows like the jeffersons and the cosby show and basically when you look at the core of it the overall idea is that when it comes to depictions of black americans it comes off as showing that hey you can work hard too. If you work hard enough and you apply yourself, you can get anywhere you want and you can pretty much thrive in this country. Now, I know some people that's hearing this right now and seeing this will say, have some words to say, and I kind of have some words to say too about it, but I'm gonna leave it at that. So I mentioned earlier that the other context behind this was the black military history aspect. Now, in terms of the black military history context of a soldier story or prior to a soldier story prior to a soldier story there really wasn't that many black military history movies made let alone black world war ii movies so in terms of black world war ii movies only two existed prior to well again based off our research only two existed prior to a soldier story the first one was a movie that came out in 1949 called the home of the brave understand him i haven't got time I'm too busy trying to understand all this stuff about Negroes. Oh, Marcy, now don't be a I told you I... I haven't seen Home of the Brave yet, but home, just reading on the plot of the Home of the Brave, it sounds like a pretty interesting and pretty fairly forward, forward-thinking forward movie for the time frame where it involves a, a disabled black veteran who served in World War II coming home and dealing with racism and, and discrimination. And the second black movie that came out was a movie called Carter's Brigade or well, Carter's Army or the Black Brigade, which came out in 1970. And the movie had an all-star cast. It had Billy D. Williams. I think it had Richard Pryor in it. But from what I recall from seeing the movie, because it's been years since I've seen the movie, the movie was more so along the lines of The Dirty Dozen. So how does this all factor into a soldier story? Well, few things. One... Looking at black military service in World War II, though it's, it, it is a very interesting vessel to tell stories, very few people wanted to really do that. And it's because, in a way, the basically nerves were still raw from not only World War II, but the recent war that, was, that occurred prior to the 1980s, which was the Vietnam War. So... And not only was it a raw nerve, a lot of that, a lot of those media's 
any media that was focused on the subject really wasn't a popular subject to focus on. So with a soldier story, it becomes unique in that it becomes one of the early explorations of black military service, albeit through a serious manner. And even though it does depict black military service, it's not the forefront of the of the subject matter. The subject matter that's at hand is more so a murder mystery, but it uses black military service in World War II to help further the story. Now, the significance of a soldier story is that after a soldier story had come out and people see how well made the movie is and and how well the movie does, it leads to people saying, well, yeah, we probably can do black military military movies or black historical military movies. And A Soldier Story came out in 1984. Less than five years later, another black military history movie comes out and it does really well. And that movie is known as Glory. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the context of the setting of A Soldier Story. Now, A Soldier Story takes place in a fictional, in a fictional Louisiana town and Louisiana military post called Fort Neal. Now, Fort Neal and the fictional town Tynan, while they really wasn't based on anything specific, they took inspiration from a few major posts in Louisiana during World War II. Now, the thing to remember is this. Louisiana during World War II was very critical to the Allied war, to the U.S. war effort. And the, right before World War II, they had the Louisiana maneuvers, and they continued having Louisiana maneuvers throughout the war. But also, many of the military posts in Louisiana became the home bases or one of the training bases for a lot of black units. Now, when it comes specifically to Fort Neal in the movie, Fort Neal, based off some recent... Based on the research I've done up to this point, Fort Neal is loosely based off of two military posts. Those military posts are Camp Livingston and Camp Claiborne. Now, the reason why I say that they're loosely based on that is for two reasons. One is that Camp Claiborne and Camp Livingston hosted a lot of black units. So in the case of Camp Claiborne, Camp Claiborne was the home of the 5th Armor Group, which can contained the famous 761st Tank Battalion. And Camp Livingston was the home of the 46th Field Artillery Group, which was one of the one of the all-black field artillery groups that existed in World War II. And another reason why I, spec why I speculate that Camp Livingston and Camp Claiborne were the inspirations for the fictional Fort Neal is because both of the military posts, and in particular Camp Claiborne, had incidences where black soldiers who who were not used to being in the Jim Crow South had clashes with both local white the local white population as well as the local white authorities and sometimes those clashes got violent and violent and sometimes they resulted in bloodshed so like I said just based off what I've witnessed in the movie and what I know about the subject matter when I look at Fort Neal, it draws inspiration from those two military posts right there. Now, on to the arguably the most important subject of this video, and that is the theme of the movie. Now, what is interesting is this. Now, the director who, the person who directed The Soldier's Story was a white man. His name was Norman Jewison. And why, like the thing is, before I, before I actually get into this, you have to give the man credit for doing a movie and setting it within basically a black military setting in World War II because he even said it himself that really nobody at the time wanted to do a subject like, nobody in Hollywood wanted to touch the subject and they felt the subject was basically not only a dead end but almost like if you touch the subject, you weren't going to make any money and basically you're going to suffer for it. So I got to give him credit for doing a soldier story. With that said, one of the things that I kind of clash with them with is the fact that when it came to the theme of the movie, I think somebody asked him what was the theme of the movie after the movie was done. And he said the theme of the movie was black on black racism. 
Now, to be fair, he said this in the 1980s. And back in the 1980s, people did not understand racism the way we understand it now. And though he may be well-meaning, he made he probably didn't understand the, all the dynamics of racism. So, for those of y'all who are watching, y'all may say, well, Kel, what do you believe the theme of A Soldier's Story is? And it's simple. I will tell me personally, what I believe the theme of a soldier story is this. The theme of a soldier story is internalization of systemic racism and how the internaliz internalizing of systemic racism impacts interpersonal relationships amongst black people, but also how black people who internalize systemic racism interact with everybody else. So I said a mouthful there, but the point I'm basically saying is that when you when I look at this movie and I look at it overall, what you see throughout is the internalization of systemic racism and basically how people cope with it. So to further explain the point, when I watched the movie, I noticed that most of the main characters and even the supporting characters they kind of fall into three categories. And the three categories are as follows. So, category one is the black soldiers who understand that racism exists. They've been in the gym, they, they pretty much experienced Jim Crow, the Jim Crow laws and Jim Crow South for as long as they can remember. And while they don't do not like it, they come to a belief that they cannot fully combat it. Were you an eyewitness, soldier? So they lynched Jefferson the week I got here. Now, two weeks after that, it Benson, was... Benson! Unless you saw it, you keep your opinions to yourself. Yes, sir. So, rather than trying to combat it outright, they combat it in subtle ways. And ultimately, surviving to see another day is seen as an effective way to fight the systemic oppression. The second group of black soldiers are black soldiers who, who again, they acknowledge that systemic racism exists and they, they, they know it exists, but unlike the first group, they feel that they can combat systemic racism openly, but the way they combat it is not through aggressive actions, but primarily through, in essence, one up one-upsmanship. What I mean by that is basically... Doug, uh, have a seat. Thank you. I that on an individual level, the soldiers in this category believe that, hey, if I show my white counterparts that I'm human like they are, I have the same skills that they are, I have the same hopes, wants, and dreams that they have, that by doing that, those, their counterparts will come to view them as equal. And the last category is black soldiers who were formerly in the second category, but while they may have gained small victories on the individual level, they come to a dreaded realization that individual progress will not solve systemic racism. Look what it's done to me. I hate myself. Yeah, well, don't blame me. God's the one who made you black, not me, boy. And this leads to them having a fatalistic outlook towards combating racism. But what it also manifests in, too, is a disdain for their own, for, the, for fellow black folks. And what I mean by that is that while they acknowledge that, again, systemic racism exists, they blame both the people in power as well as their fellow people for giving, for in essence, in their eyes, providing justification to those in power to oppress the group as a whole. Now, I want to try to break this down without taking up too much time. So when you look at the so let's let's go back over them. So with the first category, the category of black soldiers who who in essence acknowledge that systemic racism exists, but 
they don't really combat it outright. One of the things you notice about the soldiers in this category, most of them hail from the deep south. And that plays a role in, in them, in essence, feeling powerless to, affect, to outright combat racism. And you may say, well, why do you say that? Well, in the context of the film, these soldiers hail from the deep south. That means they were probably born anywhere between the late 19-teens, early 1920s. So they grew up in a period in the deep south where Jim Crow was law. And if you did anything to combat it, especially if you did something openly, it could literally result in your death. So in essence, combating the system outright is a good way to get yourself killed. So how do you combat racism? Well, you combat racism by simply surviving. You adapt to the system as best as you can. You try not to cause any trouble. But in a way, surviving to see the next day is a small victory in itself. Is it? I recognize, sir. And so because of a lot of the guys in the South, especially in the movie, a lot of the guys from the South when you look at them and how they confront systemic racism or authorities that may be backed by it, they may stand up here or there, but they're not going to be aggressive about it because, again, they're from the South. So, if you, And they're from an area where if you do get aggressive, it can cost you your life. So to the second category of black soldiers who feel that, okay, well, we can combat, the, we can combat systemic racism on an individual level by basically showing that we're human too well sir you ain't got to come in here calling us names the nazis call you schwarzer you gonna complain to hitler they hurt your little feelings it don't look like to me we could do too much to them nazi with paintbrushes sir <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the soldiers in this category what's interesting that a lot of the soldiers in this category they either hail from the northeast or they hail from from the West Coast. And how does that play into them thinking that they can combat racism in this way? Well, they come from areas where racism still existed, but racism wasn't as overt as it was in the South. Meaning that, yeah, you had racism, racism could, could cost you a job and stuff like that, but you was in an area that was more ethnically diverse. So because you was in an area that was more ethnically, ethnically diverse, there was more opportunities for you to rise within that society. So like like the main character, Captain Davenport, for example, he is an alumni of Howard University. Uh, they assigned a lawyer to the military police, eh? Well, oh, where'd you uh, graduate law school? Howard University. Hmm. Your parents rich or something? No, my father's a mailman. So... He was able to obtain education. And one of the other characters he held from Hollywood, California. So because of that, it kind of shapes your viewpoint of combating racism. Because if you came from an area where, yeah, racism still exists, but on an individual level, someone could come to respect you as a person, then that could help foster your belief that, well, if I do this and I reason with them, they may come to my to my side and ultimately see me as equal. Now the last category, which is the black soldiers who were formerly in the second category but became fatalistic about fighting systemic racism. What is interesting about the char the characters that in the third category, most of them started off as people in the second category. They started off with the idealism that hey, if we can we can combat this in, on an individual level, but the difference between the second category and the third category is time. Time and experience. The people in the second category are primarily fairly young. They, they've had some negative experiences, but they still have an idealism that kind of comes with youth. Whereas the people in the third category became fatalistic either through experiences, which can explain why some of the younger soldiers feel it, or just combination of experience and time, which is why some of the older soldiers become kind of cynical and fatalistic towards combating racism. Another element of those of that category too is that 
because of seeing, being around for a long time or the experiences, they come to view, they come to an understanding that systemic racism is just that, it's systemic. So no matter what you do on the individualistic level, you're still going to encounter it. Now, what also makes them fatalistic too is that, as I mentioned before, is that when they look at their experiences, they realize that, okay, yeah, systemic racism is systemic racism, but they also look around them and they look at the black people that's around them and say, well, if black folks weren't acting this way, then maybe we'll get a little bit further. Playing cotton picker, singing the blues, bowing and scraping, smiling in white folks' faces. This man undermined us, you and me, everybody. That Yasa boss is hiding something. Now, are they completely right with that? It's, that's, that's something that's up in the air. But what comes off oftentimes is that they see the negative attributes that black that their fellow black folks do and either the people do it by happenstance or they intentionally do it oftentimes they don't they, they do it unintentionally but because of that it irks the soldiers in the third category well, Lord, and he just smiles dream about the time well, I was a little boy that these black soldiers or their black counterparts are not putting forth an effort to, in essence, combat the system, or at the very least not give fuel for the people that are, that are in, that are, that are benefiting from systemic racism to, in essence, justify the lowly status of black folks in their respective status. So, that is pretty much my take on the theme. And I would like to actually hear what, what y'all have to say. Do y'all believe that the theme of the movie is what I said it was, where it's really um, an examination of the internalization of systemic racism and how it, how it carries over to relationships with other people? Or do you believe it's black on black racism? Do you believe it's another, another theme in, in its entirety? And more importantly, I'd like to hear, like what, like, what do you think of the movie thus far? Now, before I close this video, as I said before, I had to do, I'm going to do ultimately three videos covering the subject. And from the looks of it, what I'm going to try to do, because I'm still getting, because I'm still getting other videos worked on. And side note, for those of y'all who are still watching, I want to take time to thank y'all because... This is really just a production that myself and my father, which is probably editing this video right now, which shout out to my dad, Kel Carter, and also my mom for letting my dad do this stuff. And also other people that's helped me with this process as well. But so got to shout that, got to shout them out because they're helping with this and everything. So, but what I'm thinking about doing and what I'm trying to do is that like, because I'm back working full time, I have to base try to get the videos out as when I can so in addition to working on the soldier story reviews I'm also still working on my unit reviews as well my my my, my, on my unit videos as well so like with the with the next upcoming weeks and stuff like that I'm come, probably gonna be intersplicing between the soldier story reviews as well as my unit my unit uh video so please bear me, with me y'all I apologize like I said I'm working full time and stuff so I kind of do this when I get time but but otherwise thank y'all for taking time to watch this video I, I would love to hear y'all thoughts on the soldier story thus far do you was it a movie that you liked was it a movie that you didn't like did you have a favorite character and stuff like that and lastly what movie would y'all like me to, to review next because I have a few, I have literally a list of Black World War II movies, but there's only really, I think only 10 or 11 Black World War II movies. And I'm, I want to keep doing this. So like what Black, what Black World War II movies or even Black military history movies y'all want me to look at? But with all that said, I want to take time to thank y'all for sticking through the video and taking time to watch this because like I said from the bottom of my heart I really appreciate it because 
hey, this is a way for me to sit and talk about something I enjoy doing. But with all that said, thank y'all, and I'll see y'all next time.